Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome to this tutorial. My name is Mari Carmen and I will show you how to download and use the Log Clean software to estimate climate. Okay, so first of all, we go to Google and we look for new Log Clean local climate estimator download. So here we're going to find some links and we're going to choose this one, the second one, local climate estimator. And here we have an uh, introduction of the software and then we have the download site. So if we click on the download site, we are going to obtain the, the software. While we wait for the software, we need to find a coordinate for our study area. So I am going to open QGIS 2.18 and then I am going to open a new project. In this new project I am going to add my study area. It is a shapefile so it's a vector layer. So now from this study area, I just want to know some point inside and I want to know the coordinate. To know the coordinate and to have the coordinate in different formats, formats I am going to install a plugin. So we go to plugins, manage and ins install plugins and we write coordinate capture and we're going to get this plugin. Um, here you're going to you're going to have an install button so you click on the install button or if you've already installed you you can find it here in installed plugins and here you're going to find coordinate capture so you only activate it. Okay so now I just want any point from, from this study area. I'll go to start capture here in coordinate capture. If you don't have this coordinate capture panel, you go to vector, coordinate capture and coordinate capture. Vector, coordinate capture and coordinate capture. And now start capture and you're going to obtain any coordinate in here. So if you can see, here we have the coordinates, these are decimal degrees and these are latitude and longitude or east and north. So we want the, the, the decimal degrees. So now let's see if LogClim is installed. Okay, so now we download this and we can click on Setup. Okay, so after you've installed your, your software you can open it, you're going to have this this icon and you just double click on it. And you're going to have this window. In this window, we are going to the workbench mode. I am going to click on point estimates and then input coordinates. So we're going to input the coordinates in the new in the new window. I'll copy I'll copy this. This one is the longitude. or 
we can write it as well. And the latitude will be this one here. Nineteen point fifty seven. Zero fifty-five and altitude we can open the digital elevation model of of this study area. So if I wanted to know the altitude from this point, here I have the info and it is 2,692. And OK. So here we have the results for temperature, precipitation, and potential evapotranspiration, water vapor pressure, and sunshine. If we want to, if we want to know more, more of these results, we also have this table of results with the precipitation, the best estimate of January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and all the months. We have a, a mean value. And here we have the potential evapotranspiration as well. So if we want to see the, um, the observation altitude plot, we just click on it. We click on observation altitude plot. And here we have the graph. If we can see there are some points that can be outliers, if we if we want, we can turn them off. These are stations. So for instance, for precipitation, if I see that this line corresponds very well with this point, and I don't want this one, I click on stations and then as name or as number. It, it is better as number, as a station number. So I know that the station number eight for precipitation is not very well, it doesn't correspond very well with the other ones for this uh, observation altitude plot. So what I am going to do here is I know that station 8 in precipitation is not a good one. So I go to regional map. And here in regional map, I'll show the stations as station number. Here I have the number 8. I'm going to click on station number 8. but not for mean temperature. It will be for precipitation. So for precipitation, the station 8 is right here. I'm going to click on the station 8 and I am going to deactivate the station. Yes, and the values may may change a little bit. Now I am going to do the same for potential evapotranspiration. I go to the observation altitude plot for potential evapotranspiration. So for this one, there are there are several um, stations that are that are far from this line. So I'm going to stations as a station number, and I have one, two, ten, and probably eight. One, two, ten, and probably eight. So I go to regional map again, but in this case potential evapotranspiration, stations, as station number, and zoom out. 
so one deactivate two deactivate ten deactivate and eight deactivate okay so now we can go again to the observation altitude plot and we can see that these stations are deactivated and also for precipitation we have one deactivated so this is important because we have these results for the elevation that I, I applied in the beginning, but we can know the, the same parameters, so precipitation or potential evapotranspiration for a different elevation. To do that, we go to new location by coordinates and we change the altitude. So instead of 2700, we say maybe 800 and OK and the numbers change they don't change a lot because the because the observation altitude plot if you can see here in precipitation the change is not very is not very great from one to another. So if you want to use this information you can do the same with temperatures. You have temperatures, precipitation, water vapor, but for instance, if you want to know precipitation and potential evapotranspiration, you can export this data and you only have to go to export, table, save. And here you only write it as results zero one and it will be a comma separated value file okay you can also move the temporal resolution to days decades or days above threshold but if you want to open this information in as an Excel file, you go to Excel, this Excel is in Spanish, but you can follow, you can follow it. So here in data, you have obtained data from text. So you click on obtain data from text and you open your, your file, your CSV file. Then it will ask you for a delimited or fixed width. So you only click on fixed width and then next. And then no, this one is not fixed width. This is delimited because it has commas. So here you, you say next and then you say comma. comma and tabs and then you finish accept and here you have all the data that you obtained from log claim and you can you can analyze it uh, you can compare it against different elevations but you will have it here you have the best estimate the low estimate the high estimate I use the best estimate because it gives us um, a good estimate about the precipitation of each month or also the potential evapotranspiration 
and then you can you can calculate the water surplus water surplus the water surplus will be just the the mean of of precipitation less the potential evapotranspiration so in this case water surplus is negative and you can do it by by month as well and just um, calculate the water surplus so these are the basics of new log clim if you want to know more about log clim or or what to what you can do with this software you can go again to this website and here it is a a small introduction and uh, um, and that's all it depends on on the objective of your study so that's all for this tutorial if you want to know more about QGIS for water management check out the online courses for of Atari labs thank you and cheers <laughs>